Downstairs, situated at the back of the boat, near to where you entered. For the comfort of all our guests, we ask you to refrain from smoking or vaping on this cruise. Please switch your phones to silent and keep noise volume to a minimum. This is a safety announcement. This boat is licensed to carry 249 passengers. We maintain constant contact with Thames Navigation and the River Police at all times. This boat is equipped with a full complement of life jackets and life rafts. The life jackets are stowed underneath the fixed seating in the lower saloon and in a locker. What are we all doing this morning? Excited? Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Uh, my name is David. I'm going to be your tour guide today. If you're on the upper deck, please remain seated as much as possible. The captains are located behind us. They need to see where they are going. We haven't had a Titanic moment yet. And we want to keep the track record going. So please, when you're taking your photos, do remain seated. Now, the second rule on board the Silver Bonito today, and this is very important for those who are wearing the high-vis jackets and everyone else, is as we pass each bridge, I want everyone to give a big, loud oi oi and a wave. As this is the only time you'll be able to wave to a stranger in London and get a wave back. I don't recommend you try this on the tube. So we're passing under here, so ready? Three, two, one. Ah! Professionals are already, I love this, guys. We are passing by 12 bridges a day. I'm going to try and get us away from each one. Next, we start off our tour. To the right, we have the new Palace of Westminster, probably better known as the Houses of Parliament. Now, there's been a palace on this spot for over a thousand years, dating all the way back to Anglo-Saxon sites to the government to use as the Houses of Parliament. Now, this is the second palace that was on this spot. The previous one burned down in 1834, after a wooden tally stick was set alight and left beneath the floorboards. However, not everyone was sad about this, as a crowd gathered outside to chant, Burn, Parliament, Burn. In fact, one mass is where our MPs, or members of Parliament, sit out and have their lunch. Uh, so feel free to give them a wave. Feel free, I won't make it up <laughs> And they are separated by colour for a very important reason. Uh, red is for the House of Lords. These are the politicians elected by the monarchy. And green is for the House of Commons. And these are the politicians elected by the people. And this colour coordination is reflected all the way through the Houses of Parliament, uh, to their bars, their benches, their kitchens, even to the bridges outside. Up ahead, we have Lambeth Bridge. This is red. It was the traditional entrance for the House of Lords. Do we have any Harry Potter fans on board? Well, a lot of, a lot of you, okay. So you might recognise the bridge up ahead from Harry Potter, the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, you would have seen the night bus squeeze between two double-decker buses on its way to the Leaky Cauldron. And of course, that corresponds with Westminster Bridge, the bridge we just passed under and got away from. This is green, as this was the traditional entrance for the House of Commons. And the very important reason why the houses are separated by colour is to prevent corruption. And I'll say no more about that. Now, as we begin to turn to the left, you'll see St. Thomas's Hospital. Uh, all the nurses who practice here have the nickname of the Nightingales in honour of Florence Nightingale, who revolutionised the hospital system. She introduced wards and just general cleanliness, among other things. Uh, there is a museum on the spot dedicated to her, and there's also a statue of Mary Seacold, the Jamaican nurse who played a very pivotal part in helping the soldiers during the Crimean War. But as we turn around to the left, back to the Houses of Parliament, you can see three large towers. The largest tower with the Union Jack above is Victoria Tower. Now, Victoria Tower is an archival tower. There's actually laws stored here from the 1400s onwards. At the middle tower is St. Stephen's Tower, and this is uh, just a chimney. Now, well, by a quick show of hands, who can see Big Ben? Okay, well, this will be a plot twist, but you actually cannot see Big Ben from here. Uh, what you can see is the Elizabeth Clock Tower. Big Ben is the name of the 13 and a half ton bell housed within. However, don't feel bad, even Londoners call this clock tower Big Ben. 
It was only renamed the Elizabeth Clock Tower in honor of the late Queen's Diamond Jubilee. You are lucky to see the clock face in all its splendor, as for the past five years, it was under scaffolding as it was going underneath restoration work. Thankfully, the scaffolding came down last November, and I did hear the workers who were working on the clock face got a nice, nice long paid holiday as they were working around the clock. You can groan, the jokes will get worse. <laughs> Apologies in advance. Now we're heading back under Westminster Bridge. We all know what to do here. To a great start. <laughs> now to the right we have County Hall. And this was once the residence of the Lord Mayor of London. And today is home to my employer of Merlin Entertainment. And there you can find such attractions as Shrek's Adventure, Sea Life, the London Dungeons, and of course standing at 135 metres high, to your right, the lastminute.com London Eye. Now the London Eye is the biggest cantilevered observation wheel in the world. Cantilevered meaning it's supported on one side and it's an observation wheel as the pods are on the outside. It is not a Ferris wheel. My manager gets very annoyed when the F word is used on this boat, so it is now banned as that is a cantilevered observation wheel. Now the London Eye was designed as part of the competition for new landmark for the new millennium, where it came in second. However, British Airways love the design so much they built it themselves. It cost them £75 million to look like a steam train coming out of a tunnel with steam billowing behind it. Uh, do let me know if you can see that, because when I look at Charing Cross, I just see a toaster. Um, art is subjective, I guess. And of course, we're passing underneath the Golden Jubilee footbridge just installed in honour of the late Queen's Golden Jubilee. <laughs> now these are twin Golden Jubilee guys, so we're going to get another way here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> to your right, we have the Royal Festival Hall in South Bank Place. Both of these buildings have their roots in the 1951 Festival of Britain, which was to be a tonic to the nation after World War II. Today you can find some lovely restaurants here. The Royal Festival Hall is home to the London Philharmonic Orchestra. And if we have any skaters on board, to your right, beneath the Purcell Group, you can find the Undercroft, Britain's oldest skate park. Now, up ahead, we have Waterloo Bridge. However, this bridge is also known as the Ladies Bridge. Ladies, can I get a woo? <laughs> and this is because when this bridge was damaged during the Blitz, it was a team made up of mostly women who rebuilt this bridge. Yay! And I want to point out, it is the only bridge in London that was built on time and under budget. There, okay. Yeah, we're doing well. To your right, we have the National Theatre. Now the National Theatre is a great example of brutalist architecture. Brutalism was all about things being hard on the eyes. Um, not everyone is a fan. Uh, King Charles once quipped that it looks like the back end of a nuclear power station. And it was also voted London's ugliest building, which is a bit harsh. I can not tell you it is what's inside that counts as there is three stunning theatres there, including the Olivier Theatre. Uh, so if you're looking to go and see a show, but you do not want to pay West End prices, definitely do check out the National Theatre. Now coming up just ahead to your right you will see a sandy inlet and I'm actually delighted to tell you all that this is no ordinary sandy inlet. This to your right is actually London's premier white sand and only beach. Uh, this is called Ernie's Beach also known as the Costa del London uh, so on nice sunny days, you'll pe see people sunbathing, building sandcastles, and also mudlarking on this beach. Mudlarking is looking for historic artefacts that wash up uh, from the tents. The area behind it is called Gabriel's Wharf, and there's some lovely open-air bars and restaurants there. Also to your right, this red brick building with the tower above. This is the old OXO building. Now for those who don't know, OXO is a British stock and gravy company. This was once their warehouse. Uh, now you might think the tower above spells out the word OXO, however technically it doesn't. You see, when this tower went up in the 1930s, it was actually illegal to have skyline advertising along the Thames, as the Thames is classed as a royal highway. So OXO were actually taken to court because of this tower. However, they hired a very clever lawyer and he argued that 
No, we, no, we just spell out OXO, not at all. Uh, we just bought some random windows in random geometric shapes. We put them up in a random order, and it just looks like the word OXO. It doesn't spell it. And as you can see, they got away with it. So for the longest time, this was the only building with its name on it, along the Thames. And I did hear that George never worked again, as he became known as a laughing stock. I know, awful, awful. Now we are heading under our Blackfriar Road Bridge. This is where Victorian Londoners thought fresh and salt water mixed, reflected in the stone bird bats either side, this side showing fresh water birds, and the opposite, salt water birds. We might get a wave here, guys. Oh, yeah! Now we're heading underneath our Blackfriar Railway Station. Uh, this is the only railway station that spans both sides of the Thames. I'll tell you about these mysterious stone pillars on your way back. I just want to keep you interested for later. Now to your left, you can get a close view at St. Paul's Cathedral. Oh, St. Paul's is the second highest dome cathedral in the world, second only to St. Peter's in the Vatican. Uh, this is actually the fourth iteration of St. Paul's. It replaced medieval St. Paul's, which were down during the Great Fire of London. This version was designed by Sir Christopher Wren. Now, Sir Christopher Wren, he was a very religious man, uh, so he designed his cathedral to be 365 foot high. A foot for each day of the year, you could be worshipping. Now, there's no tall buildings around St. Paul's due to a law that states the dome needs to be seen from eight key spots in the city. This is in place to this day, and it explains why London skyscrapers are such funny shapes. Now, this the wibbly wobbly bridge will get away from her. There we go. To your right, this white building with the thatched roof is Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. And it opened its doors in the long ago year of 1997. Uh, this is actually a recreation of Shakespeare's Globe. Uh, this one was designed by Sam Wanamaker. He used the same construction methods uh, to build this as was used to build the original globe. Uh, so no power tools were used in the making. It is the only building in London with a thatched roof. It is an open air, mainly standing room theatre. At the moment, moment, they are shown with Macbeth and you can get a standing ticket for about five pounds. However, if you don't go and see it today, don't worry, you can always go and see it tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Now we're passing on their Southwark Bridge, the Lovely Bridge. Oh, the mic on the way back. And this is one of the oldest riverside pubs in London. There's been a pub on this spot uh, for over 400 years. Some of its famous patrons include Charles Dickens, Samuel Pepys, and it's rumoured that Shakespeare drank in here. However, don't believe the rumours. Everyone knows he was barred. No. To your right, you can see the tallest skyscraper in Western Europe. And this is Renzo's Pianos, the Shard. Now the Shard is over 70 floors high. Due to aviation laws, it can be no higher. As if it was, it could actually interrupt air traffic. Now the Shard is home to a number of offices and businesses. It's home to the Seven Star Shangri-La Hotel. And if you want to move into the Shard, you absolutely can. You can get yourself a stunning apartment in the Shard for 48 million pounds. However, bear in mind, you don't get a garden, you're not allowed to keep pets, and you're not allowed to open your window. I know. And that will keep the iconic shape of the shard intact. However, if you do have the money to move into the shard, my name is David, I am looking for you best friend, so do let me know. But the iconic, the majestic London Bridge, the iconic and majestic London Bridge is right behind you, we just said by it. People do tend to get it confused with Tower Bridge up ahead. Uh, don't worry, uh, you can Google sometimes. In fact, that's just the latest London Bridge. Uh, it dates back to the 1970s. I'll tell you a bit more about the history of London Bridge on the way back. However, it's in the same shipyard as the Titanic. However, it went on to have a much more successful career. Uh, it fired some of the first shots in D-Day. It destroyed Hitler's favorite battleship. I was involved in the Korean War. It was eventually purchased by the Imperial War Museum for the whopping price of 
one pound. You could say they got it on sale. So you can visit the HMS Belfast today. They do have tours on and you can stay on the Belfast overnight. And with that said, I do believe we have some guests with us today who were on the Belfast last night. So I just want to say an absolute big shout out to the Priory Primary School from Hull. And well done staying on the HMS Belfast overnight, guys. Now, up ahead, we have the most famous bridge in the world. Uh, sorry, Francis San Francisco, London has it. It is, of course, Tower Bridge. Well, up ahead, Tower Bridge. Now, Tower Bridge well, might not be as old as you were thinking. It opened in 1894 and was designed by Sir Harris Jones. The original Tower Bridge is actually the steel part you can see in front of you. The stonework was added later, designed to fit in with the aesthetic of the Tower of London to your left. Now, I have been training you all for this moment. And there is an Edwardian sailing myth that says if you get away from Tower Bridge as you're going by, you will get five years good luck. So make some noise. I need all the luck. I don't know about you guys. So. Ah! Here we go. <laughs> and just like that, guys, five years good luck. You can all buy your lottery tickets now at the end of the tour. We are now in the old port of London, one of the busiest port in the world. It was said you could cross from one side to the other, having shift to ship, all without getting your feet wet. Well, the Mayflower are on the same spot commemorating this. However, if we have any Marvel funded marathon, I guess they don't return it into a triathlon. Construction of the tower began in 1066 by William the Conqueror and was completed by his son William II in the year 1100. Now, the tower has been many things in its time. It's been an observatory, it's been a fortress, a palace, it's been a zoo. It also had London's first way, one way system. If you take a look to your right, you'll see the words entry to Traitor's Gate. And if you went through that way, you are not coming back out. As of course, the tower is most well known for being the most fearsome dungeon in all of Britain. However, it is estimated only around 20 people lost their lives and were executed sorry, inside the tower, as this was reserved for the If you were a commoner, they would have taken you around the corner to Tower Hill. Today, however, it is home to the Crown Jewels. Uh, the Crown Jewels are actually so expensive, no insurer, the insurers will insure them. Uh, and as they are estimated to be worth about three billion pounds. Coming up to your right, we have the walkie-talkie. Uh, that's the one that looks like a walkie-talkie. Uh, you will see the cheese grater. It looks like a cheese grater. Uh, the scalpel looks like a scalpel. And of course, the gherkin. And if you guess that it looks like a gherkin, you're absolutely correct. Now, my favorite of all of these buildings, however, is the walkie-talkie also known as the Fenchurch Building, and if you take a look at the top, you can see why. At the top of this walkie-talkie looking like a building, you can see the Sky Garden. Now the Sky Garden has some of the best views of the city, it has a bar, it has an aviary, and the best thing about this building is it's 100% free to visit. So, my only recommendation, however, is making sure you reserve your time slot online, as it does tend to get, be pretty popular. However, once you reserve your time slot, you're in for an absolute treat. But up ahead, that rather lucky, boring looking bridge in front of us is actually London Bridge. Now, there's been many different versions of London Bridge, and if we all know the nursery rhyme, I think we all know why there's been so many different versions. Do we know the nursery rhyme, guys? Give us a verse. Fair enough, go. Yeah, well, I was falling down, yeah. So yeah, London Bridge genuinely did keep falling down. And uh, so there's been a London Bridge dating all the way back to 50 AD and Roman times to the old city of Londinium. Uh, the most famous London Bridge would have been a medieval London Bridge. It was a wooden structure and had over 80 buildings on top of it. The previous bridge to this one was Victorian London Bridge. When that started to fall down, uh, we actually sold this to American businessman, Robert P. McCulloch, who had a chip to his golf course and lake, have a in Phoenix, Arizona. So you can still visit Victorian London Bridge and play a game of golf while you're at it. 
Now, just to your right between these two concrete buildings, you will see a stone column with a gold orb. Uh, this is Christopher Wren's monument. It was built as a viewing platform after the Great Fire of London, uh, where 60% of the city burned down, just to your right now. Um, you can still climb it today. It is 311 steps, and you get a little certificate. However, guys, we'll get away from London Bridge. Oh! If you don't believe this is London Bridge, look either side. It's literally written in the stone. Now, to your left, behind these trees on your left, you can see Southern Cathedral. Now, Southern Cathedral is one of the oldest Gothic cathedrals in London. If you do visit it, you can also visit the burial site of Shakespeare's brother Edmund. Also, on your left, you can see a real-life pirate ship. Hey, uh, kind of. Uh, you can actually see a recreation of Sir Francis Drake's The Golden Hind. And uh, Sir Francis Drake was the first Englishman to fully circumnavigate the globe. He set sail on a mission to, um, shall we say, liberate gold from the Spanish. And then he just kept going. Uh, he kept going in a straight line and he accidentally circumnavigated the globe. Now, when he got back, do you think he was uh, punished for his liberal liberation, we'll say, of the Spanish gold? Well, he wasn't. You see, he'd got enough gold to pay off the national debt three times over. So instead, he was given a knighthood and land. So it just goes to show you, everybody, crime does pay if you're friends with the aristocracy. Today, there's an escape room called Escape from the Gold Behind, and if you escape, you might meet the man himself. Now we're passing underneath Count Street Railway Bridge. Nothing too exciting about this. It's an ugly, boring bridge, and it's just a railway bridge. Uh, it went over budget and over time, so we can safely guess. There's not, there wasn't an awful lot of ladies working on this bridge. But up ahead, so the bridge, the lonely bridge. Now this bridge is the last gaslit bridge left in London. Uh, no, I don't mean to say, we try and convince it, it's not a bridge. Uh, if you take a look at the top, you'll see these lanterns, they're actually still lit by gaslight on an evening. So if you're looking for some night evening time photos on the Thames, I do recommend paying a visit to this bridge. Now guys, like I said, it is the lonely bridge, so no one's up here, so we'll maybe save our way until we get to the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. Now, as we pass underneath Southwick Bridge, to your left, just up ahead, on your left, you'll see a stone building with a very big chimney. Uh, this is the old fan, as there is a lovely cocktail bar on the top floor, so maybe after a few drinks, you just might become a fan of modern art. But up ahead, any movie fans, you might recognise this bridge. Uh, you might recognise it from Harry Potter and the half Blood Prince, uh, where this bridge was attacked and destroyed. Uh, you might recognise it from Guardians and the Galaxy Volume 1, uh, where this bridge was attacked and destroyed. You might just even recognise it from the movie London Has Fallen. You're never going to guess what happened to this bridge. Exactly, so this is the Millennium Bridge, also known as the Wibbly Wobbly Bridge. Now, when this bridge opened in the year 2000, it had to close after three days because all 168,000 users, well, most of them, complained of such a severe sway that they were getting motion sickness and vertigo, so they had to close the bridge down. Now, they reopened it three years later after a team of NASA engineers installed earthquake dampeners along this bridge. We'll get away from here and I'll finish the story, so... Aye! It is a very friendly bridge, guys. <laughs> So, when this bridge reopened after the NASA engineers installed earthquake dampeners, uh, its designer, he was a man called Norman Foster. He wasn't a Londoner, but he went on live television to defend his bridge. And he went on live television to say, there was nothing wrong with his bridge. Nothing at all. It's those Londoners. They don't know how to walk. <laughs> but now, just up ahead on your left, you can see the newest addition to skyline. Uh, this is one Blackfriars place. 
Uh, however, as we probably all learned, Londoners love giving nicknames to their skyscrapers. So a few have been suggested for this building, and they include the boomerang, the main one, the cocktail shaker, and the most popular one so far is the Kim Kardashian. And uh, leave it up to your own minds as to why that could be. We have our Blackfire railway station. Uh, the roofing of this railway station is a series of solar panels. So on nice sunny days, it's powered by the sun. And for the 364 other days of the year, it's powered by the national grid. It is the only, as I said, it is the only uh, railway station that spans both sides of the Thames. Uh, you might have seen it in the latest Mission Impossible movie. Tom Cruise ran across the top of this. However, he went north and came out at the south exit, so make a little bit of a pothole. But as we sail back under, you will notice these uh, red columns on either side. Uh, these are actually the remains of an older railway bridge that was on this spot. When the bridge started to crumble, they took the bridge down, but they realised that these pillars were embedded so deep, they would need to use dynamite to take them down. Now, they could actually use dynamite, as it would also damage the bridges on either side. So what they did to these pillars instead was, they painted them red, gave them a bridge to this thing, and they hope no one would ever notice. That's why I point them out eight times a day. To your right, we have Basil Jess Embankment. And you might see some construction work and you might be wondering, David, what are they building here? Could it be a new tube station? A new London Eye, maybe? Well, wonder no more. I'm delighted to tell you that they are building London's brand new and approved super sewer system. Yay! They are nicknaming this the Super Pooper. <laughs> and when it is complete, the pipes will be 48 metres below the banks of the Thames and they will be big enough to fit two double-decker buses driving down them side by side. Now, it is replacing our older Victorian sewer system that was on this spot. Uh, the Victorian sewer system was installed after an event called the Great Stink. Uh, so before we had the Victorian sewer system, Londoners used to just put their waste directly in the Thames. Uh, and would join all the industrial waste that was going around. Uh, so back in the 1800s, there was a really bad heat wave, which heated up all the waste in the tent, <laughs> releasing such an overpowering smell that the Houses of Parliament had to close. Uh, so you know, if it's affecting a, a, a politician, eh, something will be done about it. So they installed the Victorian sewer system, which narrowed the Thames, but also helped flush all the waste out. And it is thanks to that sewer system that the Thames of the day is one of the cleanest metropolitan rivers in the world. Now I know it doesn't look like it, but the Thames is home to over 100 types of aquatic life, including fish, eels, starfish. We thought we spotted a seal by the HMS Belfast the other day. It was an Navy seal, so I don't think that counts. Uh, well, fish sometimes spotted in the Thames a bit further down. And the Thames is home to two species of shark. One is called the Tope Shark, it grew up to be six foot in length. And the other is the Spore Dog. And the Spore Dog is venomous. So just one more reason not to swim in this river. Now, if you take a look to your right, you'll see a silver statue. This is actually a griffin. Uh, this is telling us that we're actually leaving the city of London. Uh, the city of London property is only one square mile. Uh, everything outside of it is Greater London. So you'll find these silver griffins uh, at every exit of the City of London. Also to your right, this white ship with the yellow funnel, this is the Wellington. Uh, the Wellington saw active duty during World War II. It would disguise itself as a merchant ship. Now, when you both spotted merchant ships, they wouldn't waste torpedoes, they would surface and fire at the merchant ships with their guns. So when this happened to the Wellington, it would drop its disguise and then blow the U-boats apart. Today it is a HQS, which is a headquarters ship from Master Mariners. So you can visit the Wellington, Wellington, sorry, after you spent 25 years at sea.
coming up on your right, this green dump building is Somerset House. Uh, Somerset House was once the residence of the Dukes of Somerset. Today it is an art gallery and it is free to visit like most of our museums and galleries in London. It was also used as a government office. It was the old registry of births, deaths and marriages for London. Uh, some Londoners used to call this building the Hatcham, Matcham and Dispatcham Office. It was a tax office so we can add Snatcham to that as well. But in my head, we're passing back underneath Waterloo Bridge, the Ladies Bridge. So ladies, not only did you build this bridge on time and under budget, you built the longest bridge in London. You also built it using self-cleaning stone. Uh, so through chemical reaction, when it rains, this bridge actually cleans itself. And if you know typical British weather, you can probably guess it's one of the cleanest bridges in the world. Now, if you wanted to treat yourself, ladies, after hearing that story, I have just a thing for you, which I'll point out once you pass underneath the bridge. However, guys, there is a few people up here, so we might just get away from Waterloo Bridge. Hey! <laughs> yeah, there you go. We're doing well, guys, we're doing well. But as we pass underneath Waterloo Bridge, take a look to your right. You will see a square building with a green tile roof in just a second. Here right, the square building with the green tiles roof is the Savoy Hotel. And uh, this is London's first luxury hotel. Uh, you can get the best rooms of the night, they are called the Royal Suite, and they cost £18,000 a night, uh, with a three night minimum stay. However, you do get your own butler, chauffeur, and I heard therapist for this, as after spending that much money, you might want to go and see someone. But to your right, you'll see the oldest thing on today's tour. This stone obelisk is called Cleopatra's Needle. It's 3,500 years old. It actually predates London itself. Cleopatra's Needle was gifted by the Egyptian government to the British government after their help in the Battle of the Nile. However, it did try to run away on its way over. It fell off the boat twice, and then the sphinxes were installed the wrong way around. Um, they should be facing outwards. Instead, they're facing inwards and they look like they're having a good L chat. But up ahead, go Jubilee Bridges once again. Uh, I do have to let you know at this time that the toilets downstairs will now be closed for cleaning. Uh, however, there is a free loo to use at our ticket office. And guys, you're all going to be devastated when I say this, but this is your last time to get away from a stranger in London on the bridge. So if you have any waves left in your system, guys, this is now the time to get them out. So, ah! <laughs> hey. Okay, guys, for the very last time today. Ah! Ah! For every bridge, we pass that out actual people on it. We did get away and give yourselves a round of applause, guys. Well done. Well done. Now, we do have a little bit left of our tour to go. I will continue to ask everyone on the upper deck, do remain seated until we're safely docked. I will let you know what that is. Uh, it's just really rocky around the pier, so do remain seated. However, to your, directly to your right, you'll see the Horse Guard Hotel. Uh, this is actually an hotel. You can stay here. Uh, it went up in the 1800s, and it was uh, inspired by a French chateau. Now, the foundation of this hotel actually started as a scam. However, the scammer did get caught and they eventually built the hotel anyway. Also to your right, this green roof building with the flags above is the Ministry of Defence, also known as the Iceberg Building, because all we see is just the tip of the iceberg. It's actually connected to the House of Parliament by a series of tunnels. And when the London Eye first opened, the Ministry of Defence brought the London Eye to court. As they were worried, a spy would take the pod up to the very top, look across with the telescope, and see confidential information. So this actually did make its way to court. Thankfully, the judge looked at the case for about two minutes and then said, you are literally the Ministry of Defence. By some curtains. And they did! So case and curtains closed. So now that we're back by the London Eye, I'll fill you in on some of the experiences you can try. Uh, you can try your champagne experience if you were over 18. Taste different types of champagne before going on your pod. 
Uh, at night time, the London Eye is lit up. Uh, for New Year's, there is a fireworks display at the London Eye. And did you know the London Eye is also a place of romance? So on the London Eye, you can find Cupid's Pod. And Cupid's Pod has seen over 8,000 marriage proposals. And Cupid's Pod has seen over 80 marriage rejections. <laughs> So please make sure before you pop the question that you do have a good idea of the answer as the London Eye travels at 0 0.6 miles an hour uh, and it takes a half an hour for a full rotation. So if you don't get the answer you want, you're in for the longest journey of your entire life. But that's it from the tour everybody, I hope you all enjoyed yourselves. And if you did, I have a massive favour to ask if you could leave a review on TripAdvisor or on the pink machine on the pier. It's just how my manager knows I'm doing a decent job. Um, but for myself, from our captains, from my colleagues downstairs, you've all been absolutely wonderful. Enjoy the rest of your day in London everybody, thanks so much. Thank you.